Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to use the calculator to determine the intercepts of a function and their end behaviors. All right, so I have two examples. Let's take a look. So it asks us, what are the intercepts and the end behaviors of the following functions? And we're going to focus on this one first. So basically what we need to do is take this particular function and just throw it on into the calculator. So go to your y equals and plug that function in. So you're going to go x, open your parentheses, 14 minus then 2x, close the parentheses, open the next set, 10 minus then 2x, and close them. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit then our graph, okay? And now the only thing is this might not look like your output, so maybe what we should do first is let's go to zoom and just go to standard number six for the time being. Okay. Now I know this looks a little funky, all right? You're like, well, where's the graph? You know, if you wanted to, maybe we could zoom out. Uh, hopefully it doesn't go too far. I don't really want to waste too much time getting a custom view. Oh, no, no I zoomed in. Sorry. <laughs> I got to zoom out number three, all right? And I got to zoom out one more time, so number three. Yeah, that's still too, okay, forget about that. So just go to zoom standard, okay. Why is it zoom standard? It sounds like zoom stomptisch. Great German restaurant, by the way, if you're in the, if you're in the uh, Queens area of New York. I don't know if it's still around. I haven't been there in a while. Anyway, um, yeah, you don't really hear people saying great German food, right? It's, they're not really known for their food. Beer, maybe, yes. Not maybe, but yes, definitely beer. But food? Pretzels. Yeah, that's about it. Anyway, so this is what we're going to uh, analyze. All right. Now, I know this might look a little strange, but you have to imagine the function is going to go up and up and up. It's going to come and make a turn there, and then it's going to make another turn like that. Okay. So I know that these are the important pieces. This is where it's going to intersect the axis, uh, x axis. And it looks like it's also intersecting the y axis somewhere around there, right? And these are two other x values x-intercepts, okay? Remember, x-intercepts are the locations on the graph that intersect the x-axis. The y-intercept is the location on the graph that intersects the y-axis, okay? So we will always know, what happened to this thing? We will always know um, something about the x and the y-intercepts, always. You have to remember that the y-intercept here, that almost looks like an x, right? The y-intercept will always be when x is equal to zero, okay? And y is gonna be some number. The x-intercepts now, on the other hand, is gonna be the exact opposite. It's gonna be some case where we know that the y value has to equal zero, but we don't know the x's. In this particular case, I'm gonna have three of them just from viewing the graph, okay? We should have three. Now, how do we do this? How do we find the y-intercept using the calculator? So this is what you're gonna do. Go to second tracer, use your calc function. Go to value, hit number one. And you're going to plug in, you know that your y-intercept has an x value of 0, so literally plug in 0, hit enter, and your graph, and your calculator, excuse me, tells you now that y must equal 0. So you do know that y-intercept, don't hit sign. Go back to the, so what I'm going to do is literally plug in now the value of 0, because it told me that that has to be 0, okay? Now, on to the x-intercepts. So how do we do this? So it's going to be a different method now. Go to second, trace again, so you're doing calc. Okay, and you're gonna select option number two. Now what you have to do here is you have to move your cursor, and this really moved really far out of the way. Now I know you can't really tell this based on the picture, but as I move this to the left, okay, notice how X is becoming more and more negative. You see it's becoming larger and larger in the negative direction. See how it's going still more negative and still more negative. Okay, I know it's not on the screen, but that's just the problem with this graph, <laughs> that it's really tough to kind of see visually. In any case, um, what, what we want to do now is I want to select, uh, let's say, this particular point, which is to the left of the point of interest. Okay, you'll see kind of a little bar that might come up. Now bring this to the right of the point of interest. And again, you got to go somewhere to the right. And then bring it somewhere around where it intersects, and you'll just make a guess. All right, so the value is going to be zero, okay? So after we hit enter, we realize that x also crosses, or excuse me, the function crosses the uh, x-axis when x is equal to zero, all right? So that's now going to be this particular value. So erase this, plug in zero there, okay? Now let's find the next one. So go again to second calc, okay? Go to zero, because you want to find the zero. Now you got to go to the left. So bring this now over and you're going to start to see the cursor coming back into the page. 
Okay, so here's the cursor. It's, it's back on the page. You've got to go to the leftmost bound of that point, so hit enter. Then go to the rightmost bound of the point, hit enter, and then guess it's somewhere in the middle, right? And look, your calculator tells you now. When y is 0, x will be 5. That's one of the definitions. Why do I keep doing that? That's one of the definitions of the x-intercept. The value of x when y is equal to 0. So do the last one. Go to second calc again. You can go to 0. And let's go now leftmost bound. Okay. There it is. So that's left bound of the point of interest. Hit enter. Then bring it to the right. Hit enter. And now just guess. You're not going to be able to get too close, but it'll, it'll know what you want. And then there it is. Okay. So the x value there would have been 7, as we saw. So those are the intercepts. Okay. So those are the intercepts. Now, how do we determine the end behavior of the graph? Well, we kind of already did that, right? I'm just going to resize this box a little bit. We kind of already did that. Um, we, we, we notice that as this thing trails on and on and on and on, as it goes on and on and on, it's moving to the left, as it moves on and on and on in the negative x direction, as it goes to negative infinity, the function's value, as we saw, will go down and down and down. It's going to keep going to negative infinity. So that's the end behavior of the graph on the left-hand side. And then remember we said this is going to make a turn, and it's going to make another turn, and it's going to pop back up. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have x as it goes to positive infinity. The f of x value will then go to, meaning the y value, it will go all the way on up to positive infinity. And that's the end behavior then for the first graph. All right. Let's see what we can do now about the second. Okay. So go to your erase everything. All right. And go to your uh, y equals and just clear out of that function. Okay. Now let's type in the new function. So really there's only one difference if you notice, but it's going to be, so maybe I should have saved it, but it's going to be, you don't need the parentheses there. So it's just going to be x open parentheses, 14 minus then 2x, close the parentheses, open the parentheses again. So it's going to be 10 minus now 2x. Okay, close them and then square it. Now hit graph. Okay, so if we if we notice, it's very, very, very similar. If I zoom out a little bit, let's see what happens if I zoom out. Let's hit enter. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, I'd have to fiddle with the window here to make this kind of look nice. Um, but let's just go to zoom standard again, number six. All right, so this will be close enough. So basically, if we notice, there's going to be possibly three locations where it's going to intersect the x-axis, okay? Here, maybe here, and here, okay? So let's talk about that particular point. Now that looks actually similar to, and we would do the same thing, that looks similar to the y value, right, that we had before. So if you want to find that y-intercept, all right, I'm actually just going to copy all of this because we're going to basically be using the same exact, exact, we're going to have three values, right? Okay. Uh, okay. So go to second calc for the y value. Remember we said you're going to use the value for the uh, y intercept. You're going to use the value function. So hit enter. And the y intercept is going to be some y value when x is zero. So plug that in and it told you y is equal to zero. So it's the same thing as before. Now find your x intercepts. Okay. So you got to go to second calc and go to now the zero, hit two. You got to go to leftmost bound, so hit left, rightmost bound of then that point of interest. That's fine. And then just make a guess somewhere in the middle, right there. And x is going to be equal to zero. Okay. So that tells you now when y is equal to zero, x was also equal to zero. And let's see now if we can find another particular, let's see if we can now find uh, for this point over here, right? So let's do it again. Second calc, go to number two for zero. And now we have to go to the leftmost bound. Okay, so here we go. It's going to get there soon. Hopefully it's a week close. Okay, so let's. this is left bound of that point, so hit enter, okay? And that's right bound now of that point, hit enter, and then just guess somewhere around there. So there you go. There's another zero for x, right? So when x is equal to five, uh, excuse me, when y is equal to zero, x will be equal to five. And then we got one more point on out here, so let's do the same thing. Go to second calc. Okay, do the zero, and now bring it to the leftmost point, you know, you got to go left bound, so I'm going to go back one, hit there, then you got to go right bound, so I'll hit there, and then just try to guess, make your best guess, maybe somewhere around there, hopefully, and the calculator knows, as you can see. All right, so it's going to be seven again. So look, it's the same values, all right? 
<clears throat> okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is uh, we can now utilize this to determine the end behavior. So the end behavior might be a little different. If you notice now, right, is this graph, this graph is going to continue on and on downward, and this side is going to continue on and on downward. All right, so that's going to make a big difference now when we determine the end behavior. So as x moves out and it goes to negative infinity, the function's value now will also move to negative infinity. It keeps going down. So that's what we saw before, but this one's going to be different. As x goes and becomes larger and larger in the positive direction, as it goes to positive infinity, f of x will become more and more negative because it's going down. And that's it. All right. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope that helped. That's how you would use the calculator to help you out. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.